In the 1920s, with the U.S. population surpassing 100 million people and schools increasing in size, a school superintendent from Pennsylvania had an idea. In 1921, this superintendent teamed up with a man from the Wilson Magazine Company who agreed to provide a free picture of each student to the school to place with each student's cumulative record and sell the additional six pictures to parents for 10 cents each or 50 cents as a bundle. This idea and concept spread like wildfire and built the great industry we know today of school pictures and yearbooks. There are hundreds of companies that were formed from this notion. However, the following stories you are about to hear are some of the most iconic leaders and visionaries that made the tradition what it is today. S.P. Barksdale began his journey in school photography in the early 1920s when he was employed by Wilson Magazine Company as a photographer and salesman. In 1922, Barksdale moved on to start his own company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, called Barksdale Photography. In that same year, Congress voted on legislation to begin providing public funding to schools, Barksdale photography began to grow quickly along with the U.S. student population. Barksdale, after learning and working with the long film camera for photography, hired photographers and successfully began the tradition of taking school pictures in the United States. J.E. Strawbridge, known to family and friends as Cookie, became a school photographer in 1921 and worked with S.P. Barksdale. After learning the photography trade, J.E. Strawbridge ventured out and opened his own school picture company in 1923 in North Carolina, his native state. Strawbridge Studios began in the basement of his Durham home and later expanded into Virginia, South Carolina, and Kentucky. J.E. Strawbridge ran the company before turning it over to his son in 1951, keeping the company a true American family-owned business. He is known as a man of his word and a hard, smart worker. He preached the message constantly. Honest value never fails. Olin Mills Sr. got his start in photography by selling restored old pictures in Selma, Alabama. After marrying, Mills and his wife, Mary, moved to Tuscaloosa and started capturing photos of students at the University of Alabama. In 1932, the Olin Mills Company began as a door-to-door portrait selling business and later evolved into printing orders for school and church directories. They opened studios in Kmarts and eventually managed glamour studios across the nation. What started in an old wood shed converted into a dark room grew into one of the largest operations in the United States. By 1935, Olin Mills mastered their easily recognizable portrait style, an 8x10 duotone portrait, lightly touched up with oils. Olin Mills also introduced a unique signature that would be included on every portrait to signify how each photo was a work of art. Olin Mills has been revered as a pioneer for developing useful ways to assist in the photo printing process, as well as his unique way of copywriting and branding on the bottom right-hand side of his photos. Three brothers, Don, Ed, and Bill Walsworth, came together to form the Walsworth Brothers in Marceline, Missouri. The company started by organizing plays, printing the show bills, and selling advertising. Post-World War II, the company expanded by printing showbill advertising, books for veteran organizations, memorial volumes to commemorate people's military service, and church cookbooks. In 1947, the company began printing yearbooks featuring local advertising. The local advertising ensured that the yearbooks were free of charge to the students. The Wallsworth Publishing Company, Incorporated, was established officially in 1956. Guy Snyder spent his early years working in his family's confectionery making handmade candy. In the early 1930s, Snyder began working for Hollywood Studios. He specialized in photographing schools, as well as churches, scouting organizations, and clubs. 
While working for Hollywood Studios, Snyder opened up several branches while also conducting school enrollment and population data. Shortly after, Snyder decided to go into business for himself and work to set up mobile studios all over the southern United States. Snyder collaborated with Emory Williams to modernize the way he took pictures, and this later led to Snyder building his own printers and other equipment. Snyder introduced the concept of giving parents their child's photo and letting parents pay for any photos they kept. This meant that Snyder trusted principals to hold him to the profit. From this concept, Interstate Studios was created in 1933 from his home in Sedalia, Missouri. After emerging from the Great Depression, 20-year-old Eldon Rothgeb and 25-year-old R. Bruce Reinecker focused their talent into providing school photography of distinction to local one-room schoolhouses throughout rural Minnesota. The origins of their company grew from a small office space, a mahogany box camera, and an idea. Together, they created National School Studios. They partnered with photographers throughout the U.S. to photograph school children and offer the black and white pictures to students' parents. By 1939, the company was offering enlarged 3 by 5 inch photos. In 1935, co-founder Reinecker took a leave from the company to serve in the U.S. military during World War II. Upon his return, he continued to help the company expand their product types. In 1955, National School Studios began offering full-color school portraits and a printing plant opened in Derby, Connecticut. By 1968, the company began offering 8 by 10 inch photo enlargements and their sales nearly doubled. After the passing of co-founder Eldon Rothgeb in 1972, the company continued to expand their company through the acquisition of Prestige Portraits in 1974 and Universal Publications, which later became Life Touch Publishing in 1975. Throughout the years, the company has stayed dedicated to rewarding employees for working hard to build the company and encouraging them to maximize profits while finding new ways to grow through the Employee Stock Ownership Plan, headed by co-founder R. Bruce Reinecker prior to his retirement in 1978.